Hello and welcome to more Vintage Cube. Uh-oh. Looks like you guys are finally going to get your request here. We're going to be taking Channel almost certainly. It's good. I mean, it is a good card. And when you take it early, you can build around it, right? Like now I can... I mean, I'm probably going to try and put Channel in Storm. Because that's more fun for me. But like, now if we just see an Emrakul, we can kind of put it in. And we can draft a deck that works with Channel rather than trying to put Channel in a deck. It doesn't really work with it. Hopefully we can see the difference. And uh, let's see, what else will we take? Kikijiki is quite fun. Um, Misty Rainforest is also a really strong start. I think this is either this or Underground Sea. Or what is the blue black fetch? Whatever the blue black fetch is are like my two favorite fetches to start with. Um, but we're going to take Channel, I think. And uh, hopefully pick two Emrakul. Because in the other drafts, like every single time I saw this card, Emrakul was like in the very next pack. Ah, uh, not here, not here. Um, what do we do now? So we can go two different routes. I could just take Gaia's Cradle. I really don't want to draft like green like this, but Gaia's Cradle is really busted in that deck. Or I can take Preordain and try and go more specifically like a storm combo. I guess Survival of the Fittest is also quite strong here. Uh, what do I do? I think I'm just going to take Gaia's Cradle and try and wheel Survival. If if this is going to be a channel deck, we might as well draft a proper channel deck. Hopefully green is open, we can get Gaia's Cradle, Rathelos, all the Eldrazi, Tooth and Nail, things like that. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Uh, this is interesting. Well, Channel Memory Jar is definitely a combo. Okay, I have a better idea. This is way more fun. We're going to take Channel Memory Jar and hope to wield this Oath of Druids. And then we can be like a Emrakul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Emrakul base deck. This also leaves us open to Fast Bond. So I can play like everyone's two favorite green cards in a deck that I also enjoy. Let's do this. And then, oh yeah, I have to explain that Oath of Druids is basically we play Channel and like just Eldrazi. And then we can either hard cast them or Oath into them. It's going to be sweet. There's Blightsteel. Uh, do I want Blightsteel or Kozilek? Channel Kozilek is like okay, but Channel Blightsteel is also just okay, but... I like Blightsteel a little bit better because we have Memory Jar, so we have outs to go into, like, artifacts, I think. This also is less likely to wheel. I mean, probably none of these will wheel, but I think this card is slightly better. Hmm. The fact that this can shuffle our graveyard in is also kind of fun, but I'm going to take Blightsteel. There's, like, one of these, and there's three of, like, the big Eldrazi. Uh, Mirari is wake? Okay. <laughs> I love... <laughs> Somehow I always end up forcing the hard cast Eldrazi deck, but it's so much fun. I'm gonna take wake. Wake is so good here. Uh, so let's see. Oh, I gotta turn off the Discord notifications. Um, what do I take? What do I take? We have Everflowing Chalice. Decent with channel, but not busted. I can take Wheel of Fortune. That's more fun. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's... Oh, wait. Primal Command is actually a genuine combo with Channel. Because you can cast Channel... Nah. Come on. We're to have fun. Um, I don't think I want Scrubland. I can take an Arbor Elf that can help us get double green. Empty the Warren's Gaia's Cradle is also kind of fun. You know what? We're just going to draft an absurd deck here. With Channel and Rakul in it. I want to... Empty the Warrens with Gaia's Cradle in play. That seems like a really weird ritual, but it's not terrible. Like, you cast, like, let's say you go, like, I don't know, Mox, Empty the Warrens. Inkwa Leviathan is not the best channel target, but is a good tinker target if we get there. And I'm not missing out on much else. So I'll take that. Mind's Desire was also in a pack. Uh, Arcane Artisan seems good in this particular deck because we have some big things to put out. Academy Ruins Memory Jar is also really fun though. I gotta go for that. Also, like Mind Slaver and all that seems good. So now we have Survival, although we don't really have any creatures to discard. So <laughs> I'm not too sure about that. But if we do get Emrakul, this kind of guarantees we get there. Alternatively, we could just take Copperline Gorge and go for better mana. Let's go for better mana. We're drafting something weird and spicy here, but. I'm on board with it. Garrick is good with Mirari's Wake. Maybe good with Guy's Cradle. Let's see if Mind's Desire wheels. I think that's the card I was hoping to get. Because Storm looked like kind of open. We got a like somewhat late Wheel of Fortune. Um, but someone like Downstream 
after we took this could still be trying to force storm myself included i don't <laughs> i don't know what's going on here but it's it's definitely something we'll say that oh it was the oath of druids that's what it was if i could get oath of druids that would be perfect i think i might have missed it already i think it was this pack oh that's kind of upsetting actually um corsair plus fast bond is the dream combo so we're gonna go with that over ramenop even though i think ramenop is quite good yeah, Oath of Druids is gone. Okay, well now I can take small creatures. I mean, I could have before, but now I definitely have incentive too. And we're going to be some weird Naya ramp Eldrazi storm deck. Ooh, Vivian. Flashing in an instant speed uh, Inkwell Leviathan or something like that could be kind of fun. All right, what do we got here? Sylvan Library. That's a very good green card. But I almost probably have to take a tropical island and try and wield the library. Is that good? Because we have a lot of draw sevens. So Sylvan Library is not really as good as it could be. Although we do have Sylvan Library Courser of Crufix, which is a really nice combo. But I think I'm probably going to want blue in this deck. And Tropical Island really helps with that. So I'm going to take this and try and wield the library. Ooh, Rafelos. Rafelos helps with the mana. There's also a Scalding Tarn, which also helps with the mana. But I think this is less likely to come around and definitely what we want for this deck. Basically, I'm taking a mono green deck and kind of wrecking it. <laughs> or some people might say, but we could even do something like cut Inkwell and then we'll be okay. Um, I just need some more payoffs with Channel. Because Mind's Desire being gone is kind of worrisome. Ooh... Wow, there's quite a few options here. Mer Battle Sphere, Natural Order. Hydride Crisis Channel is kind of awesome too. Oh man. So Natural Order, I think, is the single strongest card for the deck. Like if we're playing green, we get Natural Order, we get like Crater Hoof and stuff like that. Battle Sphere is good and pretty good with um, Gaia's Cradle as well. Like we can channel out a Battle Sphere and then have tons of mana. Uh, what do I want? I think I like Natural Order, it just leads to the most busted starts. And I just have to like, ooh, okay. This is a Fast Bond deck, most green decks, like you don't just put Fast Bond in a normal green deck, but we have a like two draw sevens, we probably won't wield this Time Twister, but this, this is a Fast Bond deck. This is gonna be something sweet already, I can feel it. Is it too much to ask for a Black Lotus? It might be too much. But yeah, Fast Bond is great in a deck that can like, Turn one fast bond into memory jar, play a bunch of stuff, and go off that way. Uh, Sylvan carry added definitely helps with kind of everything. It adds one man of any color. It's a green creature for natural order. That's a good card here. Also, fast bond courser is really nice. I don't know if I'm playing Vivian. Inkwell, I'll put like here. I was going to play it if I got Tinker, but I don't think Tinker is even good in this deck, so... Okay, well, we might actually have a good primetime deck here. Primetime for Gaia's Cradle is super busted. Um, we can cast it pretty quickly. It's a decent natural order target, and if we get Strip Mine and then like Crucible, primetime can fetch that up as well. That is a quite a late deck fade in, but that's okay. Also, Palancron is in the pack. Can go infinite with Mirari's Wake, so that's something to point out. Um, okay, what are we doing here? Windswept Heath can grab a Trop. Ugin is just a, like a really good card to like channel into, but it is a bit slow in Vintage Cube and it does like hurt us as well, right? Like it's minus is generally good if you're getting a bunch of value off of it, but we're playing green, so that might not be the target we're looking for, but Windswept Heath, I guess, helps us cast Mirari's Wake. Yeah, I think I actually am going to pass up an Ugin for fixing here. I could also take Kodama's Reach, but I'm gonna take the fetch. Ooh, Harmonize. Oh, Ballista. Channel Walking Ballista is pretty busted, too. Harmonize is nice. I already have two draw sevens. We might wheel a third. I'm going to take the Ballista. That's a pretty nice payoff here. And then... Finks. I could take a Treasure Cruise, but this deck doesn't... I guess Wheel of Fortune fills our graveyard a little bit. Maybe I just take a Reclamation Sage for, like, some general utility. All right, Time Twister. It's not going to come around, but we can hope, right? Because we do have the Trop plus the Fetch now. But we can kind of build our own Time Twister with Academy Ruins and Memory Jar. Let's see, we have Past in Flames. 
I don't think this is a Past in Flames deck. Vivian can grab creatures. Is this a Past in Flames deck? We have Channel Past in Flames, Wheel of Fortune, Empty the Warrens. And that keeps us open for, you know what? That's more fun than Vivian Reed. Let's take Past in Flames. Hydroid Crisis, awesome. Really happy about that. Uh, gives me something to do with Blue Man as well. Garrick Relentless, this could be a good Nykthos deck actually. We have Corsair Crucifix, Garrick, Primetime, and I'm not doing much with Garrick Relentless, so take Incinerate, probably not going to play it. Uh, I don't think Wilderness, Wilderness Reclamation is ever playable, but Vivian plus Wilderness Reclamation could be a combo, because you can flash them in, so like, ooh, Bloodbird Elf, I might play that in here. Um, you can like float all of your mana, untap your lands, Wilderness Reclamation, could get there. Uh, we have Through the Breach to go with Blightsteel, and it's actually kind of decent with Primeval Titan as well. We have Zealous Conscripts, High Tide, not really going to get there in this deck. Whisperwood is pretty bad. I think I'm going to take Through the Breach and hope we get an Emrakul as well. I haven't seen any Eldrazi except for that one I passed from Blightsteel, which I kind of wish I had the Eldrazi, to be honest. Uh, this pack's not that good. Sensei's top plus Corsair plus Fast Bond is good, I think. Dig Through Time is good, but very hard to cast. I guess Yavamaya Elder is also pretty nice with Fast Bond. Just getting tons of mana in play is good. Sure, I'll take the Elder. All right, Emrakul this pack, please. Ooh, Mind Slaver, okay. That's pretty decent as well. Uh, we can just go Channel Mind Slaver. Woodfall Primus is a good natural order payoff, but I think this is more likely to wheel considering how hard we've cut green, and this is an infinite combo. Like, we can just take their turn. I guess we can only channel once, but... Ooh, Emrakul, the promised end. Kind of where we want to be, although Avenger of Zendikar... Ugh, this is hard. So Avenger of Zendikar is better with natural order. Emrakul is better with channel. Eh, I think this is still fine. Playing a 13-13 on turn 2 is like pretty decent. I'm going to take Draga Tree Speaker. Heartbeat of Spring would actually be pretty sweet in this deck, as would Lion's Eye Diamond, but... Well, let me think about this. I don't think I'm going to take Heartbeat. The real question is, do I want LED? I have Wheel of Fortune, Memory Jar. It's actually... it is good with Past and Flames. It probably won't come around, but I think Tree Speaker is too good. I would take LED over most things, but over Tree Speaker I think is kind of crazy. Here, Terastodon is a very good natural order payoff. Uh, Renin 6 is also pretty nice. I actually like quite a bit in this pack, but I think I need to take the big green payoff. It just makes natural order good now, because now we have Primetime and Terastodon. Oh man, Lotus Cobra in this deck is kind of awesome. Arid Mesa would not actually be even that good, so we'll just take Cobra. Cobra's really good when you're going off with Fast Bond. Just generates tons of mana. This is like a weird green storm. I'm actually kind of fond of this. I'm playing Empty the Warrens just because it's good with Guy's Cradle. And I, I, want, I just want to live that life one time. Even if it is only one time. Let's see, we have Raging Ravine for mana. Or Finale of Devastation for a Hasty Blightsteel. That's a lot of mana though. I think I'm just going to take the fixing. Like, we already have enough playables but casting our spells is kind of sketchy. So doing that, plus that's a good like target for Primeval Titan, for example. I think I like Bloodbraid Elf in the deck. Uh, the real question is, do I want Past in Flames? I don't think so. If I like Metamorphose or something, maybe like Seething Song? I'm actually starting to question Vivian plus Wilderness Reclamation. Wilderness Reclamation also lets us kind of go off with Academy Runes, because we need less mana to Mind Slaver, because we can... Put Mind Slaver on top, untap everything, and then activate it. I don't think that's worth it, but it's something. I'll take in Edric. I don't really like Whisperwood that much in Vintage Cube. Edric gives us like the ability to beat down early and draw cards, I guess. Uh, Scavenging Ooze is an okay sideboard card. I still think Skull Clamp is basically unplayable in like almost every deck. Ooh, Fintorn Elves. That was a good pickup. A little bit of early mana never hurt anybody. This deck looks kind of sweet. I don't know if I'm going to be playing through the breach, and Blightsteel seems really medium here, but 
Turn 2 channel Bladesteel can still win a good amount of games. And we can go off, get through the breach, and like put in a hasty Blightsteel. Is that worth it? Because it is hard, like it's red mana, which our deck doesn't have that much of. So I could like, if I do cut stuff, I could like cut these two and just have a very light red splash. Like I'm going to play Empty the Warrens plus Guy's Cradle because that's just awesome. Then our deck is can mostly be mono green with two blue cards, one white card, which I think we can cast pretty easy. I'm okay with this. Oh wow, we even wield Avenger? I don't think this is the Lotus Bloom deck because it's just very slow, but Avenger is kind of nice with um, Guy's Cradle and Natural Order. Although, cheating out an early Avenger is not the best thing in the world. Ooh, we did get a Thousand Year Storm. I can get multiple copies of Channel. I don't think... I don't think I'm going to get there on that one. Wow, we got like everything we wanted. Devoted Druid is pretty perfect for this deck. I didn't get LED, but I don't even know if LED was good. But Devoted Druid is nice. I like that. Fast Bond. I think this is a decent Fast Bond if I do. Like, so I could very easily cut some of the nonsense cards and have a very streamlined green deck. Hmm. I hate that I even mentioned that because now I know it's probably correct. Like I cut this, cut this, cut this, cut this, get rid of this, cut this, cut this, and then I have... Oh man, <laughs> this deck looks good too. Well, mine is Inkwell. Inkwell is pretty terrible. So I could do this, but I don't want to. I want to have fun. Look, cubing is for fun. We're going to draft a weird Empty the Warrens. Is this a May? Yeah. Empty the Warrens, Edric, Guy's Cradle, Nonsense deck. That's more fun for me. Um, we get to cut some of the, like, Reclamation Sage. Who needs that? Um, what else do I cut? Maybe I cut Mirari's Wake? But that really helps with, like, the, the Storm aspect of this deck. I'm keeping it in. It's fun. We'll get rid of Edric, I think. And then... Because when you're playing Fast Bond, you want a decent number of lands. Maybe I don't play Avenger? Because Tarasted on Prime Time is like enough to natural order for. Hydroid Crisis is good. I really want to cut Blightsteel. Because it's like only good with Channel, but I have other stuff that's better. Yeah, that seems okay. Because I can still Channel Emrakul, Hydroid Crisis, but basically we don't play it turn 3. We play it like turn 4 and just kill them. I'm, I'm more okay with that. Seems more fun. Uh, is Nyctos even good? Not really. It's kind of colorless mana. I will play Academy Runes though. Like, how can I not play this deck? Uh, so I have... I think I need a basic island, a basic plains, basic mountain, and then all forests after that. <laughs> this mana's so bad, but it's more fun than like doing dumb, boring stuff. So I like it. We could bring in Blightsteel if we're not playing against blue or white. Like, if our opponent is black, red, um, this just hard casting it can just win the game. But I, I think we're more likely to win with casting Emrakul, especially early. All right, let's... Do I play Blight Steel? I'm still questioning. I think no. We're just going to run it like this. See you guys round one. All oh, right, we were playing against Mac Knife. So our opponent could like have fun. And our deck looks just like a normal, a normal green ramp deck. I'm on board. Being on the draw, I like seeing Windswept Heath. I think our deck is good in the green mirror, which is like every time I play any drain games, it's just the green mirror over and over. Well, this is going to be a pretty busted start, I think. I'm going to lead on Devoted Druid. Comes down next turn. And then Wall of Roots is... Ooh, okay. Opponent knows how to play the game. Well, I'm not going to get my Island Strip Mind because I need that one. I, I have like two blue sources in the whole deck. So we're basically a turn behind, but opponents spent a turn strip mining. Um, they get searched for tomorrow, so it is better for them, but they are also blue-green. Why is every time I draft green, I just play green mirrors? Yep. Okay, that's a good one. Let's go forest into devoted druid, because wall of roots adds mana essentially at instant speed, whereas devoted druid just adds it once like after you've activated it bribery me okay they can take big emrakul but i think i might be able to beat that actually 
They can terrasse it on my lands, but I have Guy's Cradle, so that would actually be pretty good. <laughs> They're probably looking through this like, what is going on in this opponent's deck? Yeah, not having Bladesteel in the deck is pretty nice here. Also, every time I draft this deck, I get briberied. Did you notice that? The last time I had like the Recall and Soul Ring? Please terrasse it on my lands. I actually kind of prefer it. Nice. Alright, well that thing's got... well... Hmm... It didn't get necessarily easier. Although I can just play an absolutely enormous Hydroid Crisis and get half of the life I spent back. Because I can go green green. Hmm... No, I'm still one short, I think. Because this can add double green to cast channel, so I'm gonna have to do that next turn. That's okay, we can go Gaia's Cradle. I think I can just cast Primeval Titan here. No, I think I'm a little short. One, two, three, four. All right, we're just gonna, hang on. Is there any way I can cast Prime Time? This is free if I do it this way. Then I can tap this, four, five, no. No way to cast Prime Time without using Channel, but I really want to channel out a Hydroid Crisis. So we will wait. Taking 9 off Terracidon kind of hurts. Well, they can't cast another Bribery, so things can only get so bad. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fortunately, I still have Channel. Um, and now I don't have to worry about... this doesn't have Trample. So I can just block with one Elephant here. Because we're gonna get Grise Cradle back. Let's go for it here. Green. Green. Yes. Oh! Huh. Oh, I can Hydroid Crisis into Fast Bond. That seems pretty busted. Let's do that. So let's go Channel. Then play an Island. Add green, do this. We're going to try and hit fast bond here. Oh, I almost just cast that for zero. So we're going to pay like a bunch of life. Because I'm going to gain it back. Three, two. Yeah, we'll, do, we'll go down to two. Oh, no, no. Actually, uh, if I cast this as a 19-19, it is a one shot. So yeah, let's go down to one here. Then I gain nine. I did not draw fast bond. Oh, boy. That actually really sucks. But I have a 1919 Hydroid Crisis and I'm at 10 life. I will play Lotus Cobra. Um, I can play a 2 2 Walking Ballista. I, I mean, going down in life too far isn't that scary. I kind of like killing their Incubation Druid. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or a 3 3 Walking Ballista. And I kill their Incubation Druid. And then I pass turn. Keeping back my stuff, discards, probably Raging Ravine and Forest. And hope that they don't have Trample. But even if they do, I can block with Hydroid Crisis. Nice! <laughs> so I beat them, strip mining me, bribering me, Terracidoning me, and Primal Commanding me just because I played Channel. That seems pretty gas. So they're playing green. Definitely not going to put in Blight Steel. The problem is I can't really play around Bribery because I need Channel in my deck. Um, this lets me get Vigilance and Reach. I guess maybe I could bring in Mizium Mortars as like an answer to whatever they're doing. But I think deck is perfect as it is. <laughs> deck is perfect as it is. <laughs> um. I'm gonna keep this on the draw. We got a lot of green sources. We're bound to hit one eventually. Plus we have a lot of early mana elves that add green. Um, so they could strip mine my forest, but it's, it's way better if they don't have strip mine for me to play forest here so I can turn to Rafelos. Yeah, this it goes better for me. Ooh, Mind Slinger, okay. Rafelos. I can even like play and crack Yafamaya Elder. But I think next turn I'm just going to jam a Mirari's Wake if they don't do anything here. And if they Bribery, they can terrasse it on me, which would hurt. Like, if they have turn 3 Bribery both games, there's not too much I can do there. Dude, for real? Okay, it's not Bribery. Plow Under. That's not as bad. 
I mean, it kind of hurts, but that's really not as bad. So we just play a forest. Um, this adds one, this adds one, so I only have two mana, so I just attack. I mean, it is double time walk, but if they don't have any action to follow it up... Oh god, okay. Now that is rough. I'm drawing a forest, but they're not doing anything either. They're going to level that up. I'm going to play this, and if I can just not have my lands die, right? Because they can block and then adapt, so there's no point in attacking here. And that gives them a lot of mana. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 mana? Uh, okay, well they didn't have bribery. Okay, that's not too scary. Here's to no counter spells, huh? Please don't counter it. Oh, they have Cryptic Command? Or Mystic Confluence, which is even worse. Oh gosh, okay. Okay, go ahead. This is absolutely brutal. But they're not, th here's the thing, at least so far, they're not backing this up with any pressure. So even though like this is painful to go through, if I just draw a forest here, we're not in bad shape. Now they might have Torrential Gearhulk this turn. Ooh, Channel is amazing here. So we need to play Finhorn Elves. Honestly, if we get to resolve Channel, we kind of just win still. That's how dumb of a card it is. Because I can play it, I can suicide their Incubation Druid, I can like waste their mana and stuff. It's a good move for them to attack, because they know I have channel. And I think it's kind of now or never to just go for this. I'd rather have them counter channel than Rafelos, because Rafelos gives me late game inevitability. This is a Gear Hulk, isn't it? Yep. Look how good I am at predicting what they're going to do. Yep. I'm drawing two, countering that, yeah. I wish I could use channel to pay for its own uh, cost there. <laughs> that would be pretty good. All right, that's going to do it. Ramen up, strip mine, that's enough. I like their deck. They're playing like a, a good version of what I think green deck should do, which is disrupt the mana pretty heavily. Given that they have strip mine, I probably shouldn't be doing this red mana nonsense because they can just kill Gaia's Cradle and then what? It's fine. Fine, fine, fine. I'll cut that, I'll cut that, I'll cut that. Um, I think it's still worth playing Mirari's Wake. So we get... Honestly, going up to that many lands is not the worst thing I could think of doing. And I can just play... Honestly, I kind of like Vivian. Instant speed creatures, plus like getting a bunch of creatures seems kind of nice. And then 18 lands against the strip mine deck kind of just makes sense. We run it like that. Let's go first. Okay, that's a lot. <laughs> I mean, no, I can't. That's a lot better. We're gonna keep this and we're going to get rid of Academy Ruins. Although it, it is mana, I could get rid of Mirari's Awake because that's hard for us to cast here. Mm, no, I'll get rid of the Ruins and just like hope they don't have Strip Mine. I'm gonna lead on Island because I don't have Krasis and if they turn one Strip Mine, I'd rather keep my green source. Opponent mulliganed as well, which is good for me. Um, and then I just need to hit a land. I don't know. Keeping Murray's Wake could have been greedy. Oh my gosh. Please don't kill me here. If they go turn one uh, Ramen Up Excavator Strip Mine off Fast Bond, that would be something else. Okay. That was a good start. Pretty good start here. We'll see what their last card in hand is. That was another motivation for cutting... All the draw sevens is my opponent's deck is also pretty heavy ramp so like it's very hard for me to empty my hand faster than they can empty theirs so if they tap out i'm gonna slam a mirari's wake i think i have the mana yeah if they don't tap out that's more interesting because i know they have confluence as a counter spell i think they're deciding whether they hold up confluence or not Ugh. okay and they get to grab any good creature from their deck now I only have 1, 2, 3, 4, so I can't play Mariah's Wake, but I can play Vivian. And I can hope to Vivian into a 1-mana play. I can just down tick right away. I want to get Shardless Agent, okay. They must really need action here. Let's go Island, Vivian. Down tick Vivian. XL1, put the rest on the bottom. Okay, so I'm just going to take... Hmm. This is actually hard. I could take Emrakul. It plays around Bribery better, and then I have a castable Emrakul, like once I play Mirari's Wake. 
think I'm going to do that. Because I can't even play Wall of Roots here. And pass turn. That gives me a way, like an avenue towards victory. A Shardless Agent hopefully don't hit anything too busted. Ponder was pretty good, actually. Well, as far as green mirrors go, this has been more interesting because opponent has interaction and I have like, I don't know, interaction, I guess, stuff to do. Instead of us just like, you know, racing, one person tries to ramp, the other person tries to ramp. They tanked but chose to not shuffle. Fair enough. Chart, of course. Okay. They didn't even go for the discard. That means they have something expensive in hand, I think. I feel like I'm about to get hit by plow under. Uh, let's just hope for no spell pierce, huh? Looks like they have six, though. Nice. Why? Oh, right, this gets more toughness. Okay. Um, so I can either cash in Vivian to get a creature here, or I can uptick. I kind of like upticking. If I want to block, I can. Otherwise, I still have access to two extra mana next turn. And now I can play stuff with Flash, so like... Them holding up counter spells isn't as backbreaking. Here comes Plow Under. Yeah, that hurts, but it's not the end of the world. Um, I would rather draw... I guess it doesn't matter too much. No, because I don't need the planes anymore. So I can draw the island and then down tick Vivian to try and hit a creature. Do I want to trade off my, my Devoted Druid? I think so. Let's down tick Vivian. Ooh, Finhorn Elves and Krasis both are pretty nice. Um, I think I like Krasis better. Let's take that. Get rid of the rest. And I'm just going to play Forest because I'm going to flash in a 3-3 Walking Ballista. Uh, no, I'm not going to flash it in because they could miss to Confluence. And it's a 3-3 because of Mirari's Wake. Yeah, I don't want this getting countered. Because I, I really want Vivian to stay alive. That's how I'm going to pull ahead in this game as far as card advantage goes. Beautiful. So, you gain Vigilance and Reach. Um, I could play the Island and go for a 4-4 four, four Hydride Crisis to draw 2, but let's wait one more turn. And this has Vigilance, so I get to attack. Pass turn. Um, I'm probably just going to add counters to this at end of turn, but now, you know, they don't really know what they should do. This looks like Bribery. Bribery can get Terastodon, which kills my Mirari's Wake, which would suck. That is not a Bribery, okay. Put a counter. So they might go for Confluence now, if they're like trying to bounce it. Okay, not too bad. Oh, that's quite good. Primeval Titan with Flash is not the worst thing to have. So up to here and attack. I guess I play land. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... 10, 11. So we're one land away from casting Emrakul if we Walking Ballista down our own Vivian. Don't think that's worthwhile. Whoa. Okay. So I can flash in Prime Time or Crisis depending on what they do. Mystic Confluence to draw. They're holding up what looks like a counter spell. Hmm. I think I'm just going to get down Crisis while I have the blue mana. That way, if they counter this, it's like still not that bad for me. And this is still a big threat. Like, it's a 6-6 six, six flyer. And Terastodon is gone, so Bribery's not even scary. That's nice. Yeah, I don't know. It Maybe Primetime was better there, but if they counter Primetime, it's way worse than if they counter Krasis. Okay, that's a start. Okay, that's also a start. Emrakul is not lethal, though. Upheaval would be pretty bad. So they have Black Lotus and Channel. So we'll see what they have. All right, that is in fact Emrakul, but that doesn't win the game. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I can keep both creatures. So they need something on top of that. Otherwise they can't attack, but they have to attack. Otherwise they die. So we definitely get rid of Vivian. One, two, three, four. I think I just get rid of all of this and just bank on these creatures. Take 15, and hope they don't have anything back. If they have Gear Hulk for Confluence, we're like super dead. All of Roots doesn't do it. What's your last card? Yeah, we did it! We beat Never Cool. Take that. Get out of here, opponent. See you guys next round. Oh man, that was glorious. Now I get to go first against JB96. Oh my gosh.
If I draw any land this hand is... Uh, I'm gonna keep. It's just so good if I draw a land. And like... I can wait a turn. If I miss a land drop, this hand is good enough to recover. Please deck. Land. We love fortune. Perfect. Well, here we go. The old one land green hand. Opponent's deck looks sweet. They have fixing and stuff. Alright, we need to land like right now. There we go. Let's play Gorge into... I guess... Raphelos is the easiest to kill, but he got he has the most promise. I'm gonna go Wall of Roots, because I think I'm just gonna play Corsair next turn. Yeah. And this is hard to kill from any burn spell, so they would need like an Exile spell or a Bounce. Whoa. Nahiri the Harbinger. Okay. That card ultimates so quickly. I uh, need to deal with that. We drew a Plains. Well, I can go Lotus Cobra into Corsair of Crufix. Obviously, I don't get the Corsair off the top, but that's okay. Green. <laughs> Fast Bond Corsair, okay. Not complaining about that one. So let's just hope we get to attack Nahiri with at least one of these two creatures. Although... If they don't kill Lotus Cobra, we can maybe go off with Fast Bond, Corsair of Crufix, Wheel of Fortune, Lotus Cobra. We might actually get to live the dream, depending on what they have. What do I want to happen? I want them to tap out for, like, a Gideon or something bad. Gideon's good. Thunder My Hellkite is actually even better than Gideon here. Because <laughs> it means they have nothing. Oh, right. That can exile Corsair. Right. Huh. How did I not see that? Well, that is upsetting. But I think Fast Bond Wheel of Fortune with the Lotus Cobra in play is too good to pass out. Let's just, this is fun. I don't care if it's good, it's fun. Ooh, okay. And we have Garrick as well, that's pretty good. So let's go Forest. Yes, and Green, Mountain. Yes, and green, uh, forest, I think always yield to that one. Always yes, always yield. Green, raging ravine. Yeah, this is probably not good, but I'm enjoying myself here. Green, I really did not draw well. That's kind of unfortunate. So I can play a decently sized walking ballista. I think I want to Yalvamaya Elder though and hope to hit something good. Get Island Forest, draw Memory Jar, Tropical Island. Okay, well, I can take a bunch of damage. That seems correct here. Um, I think I want to add red now. So we're going to play a Garrick, loading this red. I played Raging Ravine this turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I can play a three, three Ballista and then kill Nahiri. Garrick dies from the Thunder Maw. I don't think this is going too well. But here we are. Attack Nahiri. That, at least I got to play a bunch of lands. That's what matters here. We attack, then we ping it down. Go. All right, that was fun. <laughs> it would have been a lot better if I had a Corsair in play. Because I could have like gotten all the top cards in my deck and stuff. I also just gave my opponent seven cards and discarded some of my better cards. But we had outs to just combo off. Remember we have Empty the Warrens and Gaia's Cradle in the deck. And in addition to another Memory Jar. Like it could have been really sweet. But as it stands we're kind of just dead. Oh they're attacking me. Uh, they might regret that. Red. Um, can I kill them? I'm gonna activate Raging Ravine a bunch of times, or I can activate Walking Ballista a bunch. Can I kill their Thunder Maw? I would need no. There's no way. So let's activate Raging Ravine. Two, three, four. So I think it's better to just activate Walking Ballista here. We're gonna ultimate Garrick. I don't think I can kill them, but I don't really have a better option. So this is going to be 7, 12. Actually, maybe I can. No! Deceiver Exarch tapping something. 
Uh, okay, we're probably dead here. They tapped on Raging Ravine. Yeah. Man, I actually had a kill if they didn't have anything. As it currently stands, I don't believe I have a kill. In fact, I guess if they don't block Walking Ballista, that's 6, 12. No, that's still not lethal. It was a good attempt, though. Right, that can go up to 6. I can hit them for 3, that's 9. Well, we might as well put a counter on it. And maybe they'll show us like a Deceiver combo or something. Yeah, they're just showing us more of their deck for no reason, which I'm okay with. Okay, we are super dead. So I guess we got to know that they have a Bloodstained Mire, if that helps at all. Uh, I think I'm just going to keep it the same. This seems like a pretty good configuration for fun. Um, not the best for winning, but winning and having fun. Now that's the real win condition. Wheel of Fortune plus a bunch of lands, no. This hand is a yes, and we get rid of Empty the Warrens. Yeah, we want Empty the Warrens somewhere in the deck. Hold on, we'll get into six. All right, we're going to lead on Forest because it's better with Rafelos. If we don't draw another Forest, I think I play Devoted Druid first, maybe? Not quite sure. Oh, Fall of Roots is pretty nice. Um... Let's, I guess for fellows, if we draw a forest has higher upside. But at the moment, if they have a kill spell, I would almost rather just have this die than Devoted Druid. Yeah, I think just because I don't have that many forests in play. There's a natural order. Okay. Now I get to go Mountain, Wall of Roots into Devoted Druid. Unfortunately, we drew the Terracidon, but I can get a Primeval Titan, which we have a lot of cool utility lands that I can get. Oh, that'll be good after. Re, uh, which one do I kill? Probably Wall of Roots. This can play around Miscalculation, but not Mana Leak. I can also beat Force Spike, Spell Pierce. Yeah, I think I agree with this sacrifice, because if I had sacrificed Devoted Druid, uh, no, that actually would have been okay. Yeah, Primeval Titan is our best, unfortunately. I mean, it's still a great card, and this sets us up for just casting a Terracidon. Let's get Gaia's Cradle. And Tropical Island, probably. That way if we draw Krasis, we're in business. But maybe I get Raging Ravine because that enters... That's my only land that enters tapped. Sure. It also pressures my opponent pretty well. Past turn. So next turn I have... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ah, I did play on Miscalculation. Take that. And now that would have been good against my Terastodon, which they don't really know about. But they, like, need to answer this. So if Minturn Elves is free, I don't think I want to attack with Raging Ravine. But it does put my opponent on a two-turn clock. Start with Fintorn Elves. Three, four, five, six. I'm just going to go for the cast of Terastodon here. I don't want to get Deceiver Exarch into Twinned. Because now if they try and Deceiver Exarch tap down Primetime, they can't do that and counter Terastodon. Unless they have Force of Will. That would do it. Okay, they don't have Exarch. Let's get Tropical Island Academy Ruins. Next turn, we're going to go for Wheel, or just attack them. Nahiri eats prime time. Okay. Well, I have a couple options. The most fun is Wheel of Fortune. That leaves me relatively susceptible. Right, I just do this, cast Wheel of Fortune. I untap with a good chunk of mana. I also have Memory Jar plus Academy Ruins. Alternatively, I can just Raging Ravine down the Nahiri. Let's be real. I'm just going to wheel. I don't think I even need Sylvan Carry added. Although it does just cost one. Nah, I want all my mana. Dude, what is going on here? These hits have been so bad. Okay, well, that was terrible, actually. We're still going to Raging Ravine down the Nahiri. Forest at red. Tap Guy's Cradle, tap this, play Garrick. Garrick untaps Guy's Cradle and Forest. Activate Raging Ravine. Um, I'm one away from double activating, but that's okay. We attack Nahiri. Yeah, that's really unfortunate how many, like, we just didn't hit anything. We just gave them a full grip. But I have Garrick Ultimate again. 
Um, if they colonnade and kill Garrick, we can just activate Raging Ravine a bunch of times. So for those who don't know, Raging Ravine gains the ability uh, when it attacks, get a counter on it for every time you activate it. So you pay four, turn it into a creature and attack. It gains one counter, but you can pay more and give it more and more counters. So it's actually pretty good. They had Fiery Confluence and Inferno Titan. Well, we'll see what this is. Riftwing Cloud Skate. Bouncing Raging Ravine, probably. Or Garrick. I think it kind of has to be Garrick. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's draw a Memory Jar. Hey, we did! Uh, I think we just win. Because we can Memory Jar and then Academy Runes with the draw step on the trigger. Yeah. Channel. Then we go Forest. Oh man, yeah, we're going off. Okay, definitely doing this. Let's add some blue. Uh, one, two, three, four, sure, five. Play Memory Jar. So we're going to hold control, sacrifice Memory Jar, and then put Memory Jar on top. So now I draw it. There's our fast bond. And I got Krasis, so I'm not really that worried about anything here. Play forest. This is beautiful. Always yield. Always yes. Always yield. And add some. Oh yeah! <laughs> they didn't even make me go through it. So we basically we could draw every single card in our deck, and we had fast bond, so we were gonna get infinite mana. That was beautiful. I was gonna empty the warrens, and then tap Gaia's cradle for enough mana to walking ballista them to death. I'm really mad they conceded, because that would have been fun. Ah, all right, all right. Uh, game three. Why would you concede there? That was fun for everybody. I'm gonna keep doing. This deck's fun, man. We got to go off at least one time, even though our opponent stymied the fun. That is a turn. Yep, that's a good hand. Yeah. <laughs> that's a turn two Emrakul if I ever saw one. Academy Ruins. So we're gonna go, I guess I can play Fast Bond here. Forest, Fast Bond. Windswept Heath gets us Tropical Island Finthorn Elves. I'm not going to play Academy of Runes because I could just do that next turn. And next turn we channel out an Emrakul. They have two mana. We can even play around Miscalc. Ooh, that's good. So we're going to play around Miscalc. Uh, man, I can't cast Hydroid Crisis. I mean, Emrakul is good enough, but that kind of sucks. Cast Channel, so... To, I'm going to pay 11. Oh, I don't even need 11 here. Yeah, that, that's unfortunate. I can't do any of these other sweet things here. But that's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I conceded. Yeah! <laughs> are we in the finals? We are. <laughs> and we'll see you guys there. Hello and welcome to the finals with this beautiful, beautiful deck. This is quite the start. Uh, Sylvan Carrietta does give us green, or blue. And we're on the play, holy cow. Yeah, this is kind of the start we wanted. I'm kind of glad that I whiffed on those other times with my deck last team, because it let us like do it more times. With just like Fast Bond, Memory Jar, and Academy Ruins, it's kind of hard to whiff, because Memory Jar Academy Ruins is such a powerful draw engine. Opponent mulligan to six, which is even better for me. All right, don't kill this friend and we'll be happy. They send me a message. And you. Okay. That's a little bit more effort than just typing you two, but for some reason it feels less sincere. It's probably just me. So we can go mountain, level you up, tap this for a sylvan carry added. That's a good start. One, two, three, four, five. So I could just jam a mind slaver. But Mindslaver generally gets better the later the game goes. I'm going to get pretty greedy here and go Wall of Roots, Windhorn Elves. Um, I, so they could flash in Snapcaster Mage and block Draga Tree Speaker. I don't think it's worth attacking, so I'm just going to wait. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is going to be a 6-6 six, six Krasis. Even if they counter it, I guess Mana Drain would be bad, but Counterspell is not that bad. And I'm going to wait to play the land because um, I can draw Guy's Cradle plus like spells. Mana Drain hurts, but the rest is good. Oh, okay. 
Um, let's play the this in past turn. If they don't do anything here, I don't know what's going on. Okay, they're just dead now. That's a big boy. So I can memory jar, but I think natural order is kind of just better. One, two, three, four for natural order. Sacrificing the Finn Horn Elves. Playing around like every mana leak imaginable, imaginable. And I have one, two, three, four, five, so I can still memory jar after this if they cryptic. They. Whoa. Uh, okay. I don't mind playing a 3 3 Hydroid Crisis here. Uh, maybe I wait. Let's just play Memory Jar. That's better. Go. Because then I can, like, Memory Jar, Fast Bond, do all that combo stuff. I can also just play another 6 6 Crisis. Oh boy. Uh, I'm gonna lead with the Lotus Cobra. I think I probably want the red. But I don't really need the blue this turn, so let's start here. Cool. Awesome. Let's go! <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh, that's bad. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I can Academy Runes back the memory jar, but all this man is kind of to waste. Yes, let's add blue. Yes, let's add red. Yeah, this is kind of rough. This one's gonna add green. So I'm gonna play channel now, even though I can't actually use it for anything. There's no way for me to get, so Academy Runes puts it on top, but there's no way for me to actually draw that card. So I'm gonna cast channel, hope they counter it. But I really was just trying to increase the storm count there. Play another forest, get on to 20 life, red. Play Windswept Heath. Green. Uh, take a damage. I'll go down to 19. That's whatever. Thin our deck a little bit. Why not? Get a trop. And green. This is going to be a very uh, sad victory here of just empty the warrens, but here we are. <laughs> but I can memory jar into Gaia's Cradle and then get tons of mana that way. Why does it keep showing this? Go, just stay open. There we go. Then we are going to... I guess I can do that at any time, but I can like level this up a couple times. Whoa. Level up. Level up. And then attack. I don't think I'm going to attack, so let's just level it up again. So I get my hand back. And now I have the Mind Slaver lock, because I found Academy Runes. So next turn I win if they don't kill me. Goblin plays around them like Ember cooling me. Okay. Man, nobody lets me play out my stuff. They have opposition. I saw that. That feels like they have control magic as well. So that's definitely a reason to bring in Reclamation Sage. Um, is it? Nah. We'll just... Okay, it probably is. But I just don't know what to cut. And I'm trying not to be lazy because people keep saying Caleb, you're being lazy in sideboarding. Which I was. I need to stop doing that. Uh... They're all so good. This deck is like perfect. The deck is perfect. Look at it. Look, have you ever seen a more perfect deck? This is... If we had a single forest, it would be good, but Fast Bond is essentially a mulligan anyway, so... Oh, this is pretty good. I can keep... We have Lotus Cobra, so I think I just get rid of a Plains. And then we just hope to draw... something. There's Emrakul. Okay, well, if we can draw a Channel next turn, that'd be kind of sweet. So this opponent had miscalculation, I think? No, that was the previous opponent. Okay, so we're gonna lead with Lotus Cobra. If they counter that, that's fine. Okay, they both have miscalculation. Deal. Oh, well, I say we go for it. Although they do have like control magic. I'm actually gonna not go for it this turn because first of all, they have a bunch of mana up, but second of all, I saw stuff like control magic and I would rather put targets out so that I can like use things in their hand better. Like, let's say they have like a Brazen Borrower in hand. I guess, well, something that can target Emrakul, right? I would rather put things down so when I control their turn, I have something to interact with. Um, so I played a land, so I think I'd rather get down Wall of Roots into Devoted Druid here. I might run into Daze, but I'd rather have this get Dazed than Channel. Okay. 
yeah, so now like if I am cool and see control magic in their hand, I can just control magic a wall of roots and kill it in response, or devoted druid and kill it in response. I'm going to lead with Course of Crufix because now they have a bunch of mana open. They're playing opposition, so they're definitely playing creatures. Ooh, that's a good one. So let's play you. Hopefully this gets countered, and then I just channel an Emrakul. Mana drain. Okay, well, much rather have that get mana drained. Let's guys cradle, channel, and then play an Emrakul. Uh, so I have one, two, three, so it costs ten. That's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And they used Mana Drain on Corsair. I can play for Mana Leak. I should turn off auto yields. Um, because I have channel, I can just do that. Man, can you imagine if they had drained my Emrakul, how bad that would have been for me? Can it be countered? Yes. We did it! <laughs> Fair and balanced. That opponent didn't even get to play the games. That's why I really think like this was fun and channel was like cool and we got to do these things, but it just channel is basically like all of the payoff of storm cards. I think someone commented this actually playing a channel deck is like all the benefits of playing a storm deck without any of the like work. You just have two cards, you channel an Ember cool and win. It's, it's really not fun. I would much prefer to like fast bond into Memory Jar, Academy Runes, play my deck, empty the Warrens out of Gaia's Cradle, and then hard cast an Emrakul. That sounds more fun to me. Anyway, this deck 3-0'd! You were all doubting during the drafting portion. I know it. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. See you guys next time.